Oh, crud. Well, that's not good. Basically, the suggestion box reset. So I have to go back and try to find where we had left off because I don't know where we left off. I'm really surprised that he even keeps track of what suggestions he has and hasn't read when it comes to the suggestion box. Because it's so clearly just a waste of time segment for him, I can't even believe he put in the effort to keep track. Let's see. I'm trying to find where we were. Okay, DSP, since you're going to continue to look, I'm just going to skip ahead till we find it. Okay, here's the OP Boon one that we had read about gaming news. Okay. Yeah, no, we already covered that one. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead again. Okay. By the way, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start summarizing the suggestions in some cases because people just kind of say giant bloated paragraphs that just say the same thing. So, for example. Wait, wait, wait! Before you start going in, doesn't summarizing these suggestions kind of go against the spirit of openly addressing the suggestions that are given to you? Wouldn't that be the more transparent and honest way to address them is by reading them word for word and then addressing them exactly how they were written? You're always going on about how you're Mr. Honest. You're better than everybody else because you tell the truth. But now we're going to start paraphrasing, summarizing, and completely changing the point of all of these suggestions. Not that that wasn't happening before, but now we are outright addressing it and saying that that's what we're doing. Very robust. The idea way for him to be doing this if you ask me is that he would be taking screenshots of all of these suggestions and putting them up on his obs so that everybody can read them with him while he goes through the suggestion that way there's no miscommunication or misconception about what is being said for example add chapters to the pre-stream podcast if i want to see you talk about something i don't want to skim through it back and forth till i find it we try that for example uh we, we try to use the ai uh timestamps and then they get put into the the uh comments and then sometimes my editors go back and put those into the actual description of the video so that's something that i think has been implemented you could correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's already been implemented so thank you for that suggestion did you just hear what i heard because i didn't catch this on my first listen through but now i have not only do we have editors doing our thumbnails and doing our other channels but even on the main channel we have our editors going in and putting in timestamps for chapters now i know op boone has always been in the comments putting in the ai generated timestamps that's been a thing for a while now i knew about that but to have the editors go in and actually add the chapters to the videos using those AI timestamps. That I didn't know about. Poor OP Boone's getting his timestamps stolen for the content. At least they get referred to as editors. OP Boone is just OP Boone, that dent that puts in the AI timestamps. Remove bloat from the podcast. Shorten recap segment. Shorten day off segment. Shorten talking about your schedule. So just shorten everything. Make it not a podcast is what you're saying. But that makes me have to question, DSP, why is your entire pre-stream, or what you call a podcast, 90% about schedules, recaps, and your day off? Do you think that's entertaining? Do you think that that's genuinely how other podcasts are owned and operated all over the internet? Do you think all of these comedians and internet personalities have all of these podcasts and all they talk about is what they did yesterday and what's coming up on the schedule? That's why I think it's so important that if you want to make a piece of content, that you look at other people who make similar content and understand what does and doesn't work for them in that aspect but dsp i don't honestly think has ever even listened to a podcast he thinks if you get in front of a microphone and you don't have anything going on on the screen that it's a podcast which i guess technically but that's not what makes for a good podcast and if you're not trying to make a quality product then why are you making a product at all and i want to make this clear this is not a 672 shout out i will not be giving 672 any sort of shout outs but he did say in the chat skims our answers but can't skim the schedule even a regarded clock is right twice a day the whole point of a podcast is to have topics to talk about. You don't like the topics, just shorten all of them. Okay. Um, let's see here. Someone else mentioned this. Take more advantage of your mini PC. There are lots and lots of free or cheap indie games that would be fun to jump around in every, every once in a while. This one I 100% agree with. I have that mini PC. It's literally sitting there collecting dust. Hell, since I played Chrono Trigger in the fall, and then we played that horror game, Phantasmophobia or whatever, at Christmas, and then I haven't used it. Why? RPG Overload. Like, that's why. And I, I, I agree with this person 100%. But the mini PC sounds like the answer to your problem, DSP. You're complaining about playing too many RPGs because they came out at the same time and there was nothing else to play for a large chunk of time at the beginning of the year. But the mini PC was there the entire time and you could have played any number of games on that thing. So don't sit there and act like it's the mini PC's fault that you decided to play all these RPG games and haven't got back to using it. Also, I have to say that I cannot stand when he decides to agree with his suggestion and think that it's a wonderful idea, but refuses to actually come up with a plan in the 
future so that he can actually implement said suggestion. Because if you're not actually going to come up with a way to use it, then you might as well have just rejected it outright. It just seems so fake to be like, oh, I love your suggestion. Let me do nothing with it and give you an excuse as to why I can't do it. But I love it, though. It's really good. Just say you hate it and move on. That is a squandered resource. There's a lot of stuff on PC that I know we could be playing, whether it's Fightcade, whether it's indie games, whatever it is. I know we could have more variety with that. The problem is I'm so busy with the fucking games that are too long, I can't use it. My strategy is I want to implement that this year. You know, once we get to a point where we're like, oh, what should a night stream be? Fuck it, turn on the mini PC. Let's see what indie games are on there. Let's play some old school fighting games with Fight Cake. That's the point. I want that to happen, but we haven't even gotten close yet because I'm too inundated with too many fucking long games. And you might be sitting here listening to that and thinking, wow, Atlas totally got debunked because DSP 100% just gave his plan for how he's going to utilize the mini PC in the future. And the only thing that I would have to say to that is that is the most half-assed generic plan I've ever heard of. There was no commitment. There was no time frame. There was no games as examples that he was thinking about playing. It was him just saying, yeah, in the future, I want to use it. He's had the mini PC since the summer. And the only thing that he's done on it is play Chrono Trigger and play Phasmophobia. I don't know how many of you get new gadgets and gizmos for your hobbies for the things that you enjoy doing but when you get a new gadget or gizmo you want to use it and it's the exact same thing when you're a streamer when you get a new piece of equipment when you figure out how to do something different in your obs you want to utilize it you want to show it off and i think that the fact dsp hasn't done this yet hasn't actually really utilized his mini pc just shows that he's really not interested in doing it anyway so we can sit there till the end of time saying how he wants to use the mini pc in the near future but until he gives a hard date gives an actual idea of what games he wants to play and when he's going to do it. I'm just going to assume that we're going to continue the cycle of saying that we don't have time. New games are coming out. When am I supposed to do that? I'm too busy. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, Lavinia agrees. So I promise you, we will do that this year when we get, it gets to the point we can do it. I just need the time. The problem right now for me is I'm in demand doing a million things and there's not enough time to do them all. Thank you for the suggestions. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Here we go again. Cut your podcast to only 30 minutes. So the podcast will literally be what then? Just a new segment and that's it? Again, I keep telling you guys the point of the podcast is to get all of these topics out of the way so when we play the games, we can focus on them. But why is that something that you have to do, DSP? I will never understand this. Why can you not just talk about different topics while you play a video game? Because that's what people want to hear. That's what they want to see when they come to a stream. Your insistence on only talking about the video game while you're playing the video game is so foreign to me. I just don't understand your thought process. And in my humble opinion, I think that your pre-stream should only be as long as you actually have segments for. So yes, you do the DSPN segment. Yes, you do the Phil's Day Off segment. And if you want to come up with other segments, that way you can justify the padding that is your pre-stream go for it but the entire idea of sitting around for 30 minutes while you just read the chat and sway back and forth is is completely absurd in all honesty but notice that this is something that people keep saying notice that this is constantly brought up in every suggestion box pretty much as frequently as quit begging is at this point and just like quit begging this is the one that he will vehemently go to bat for he will die on this hill the, the pre-stream must be this length because i have to do my schedule dude i have to do the recap of the recap this is mr i need your feedback i need your suggestions guys and then you give him the same feedback and the same suggestions day after day and he just doesn't get it through his thick skull imagine if i go to boot up a game and literally the first 45 minutes is everyone bombarding me with questions are you gonna do this what do you think about this new story that just happened what about this here uh you know what's going on here then i can't play the game but why are you incapable of doing something that everybody else is capable of doing dsp other streamers will boot up the game and talk to their chat the entire time it boots it loads and they get into the game and get their bearings as to what they were doing and then after they figure out what they're doing as they walk from location to location as they do every combat encounter they might check out the chat and see what they're saying and respond it's not that complicated it's not that difficult to do the fact that you've been doing this for 15 years now and are still incapable says a lot about how much effort you're willing to put in that you can't grasp the very basic concept that's required to be a competent streamer the whole point of the podcast is to get that out of the way cutting the podcast down to 30 minutes makes no sense all evidence leans towards the podcast is doing better than the gameplay why would i cut down the podcast stop suggesting the same thing over and over when it makes no logical sense then maybe i'll take your suggestions a little bit more seriously right okay 
Just stop suggesting the same thing over and over, you guys. I know that you're all in agreement and you all feel the same way about my content, but I really don't want to hear it. Just tell me that I'm doing a great job and that you want to give me money. That's all I really want to hear. That was the pig roach to English translation for anybody who needed it. Mm. Here, here's a great one. My genuine advice is to consider an exit strategy. Okay, here's my exit strategy, okay? I'm going to click on your name, and I'm going to hide this user from my channel. There's my exit strategy. I exited from having to read your stupid comments. Ack, 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 DSP. You're so funny. Gotta love how DSP doesn't see how having an exit strategy is a good thing. Having an exit strategy to something that has been ruining his life for the past 15 years and is very clearly not good for him. And that's before we even begin to talk about how his numbers are declining and have been declining for a very long time now. How everything that he's doing isn't sustainable and that he has no skills that could be put to any sort of real life use. But yes, let's mock and treat this person like they're stupid because they recommend that you have a backup plan because having a backup plan is always a bad thing, obviously. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> I exited. I exited very fast. I didn't waste any time on that one. Okay, let's continue. I just got to find where we were. See, now this one, I don't know if this is true or not. I would like your guys' opinion on this. You ready? Your capture card has audible white noise on constantly. When you mute your mic, but the capture card is active on a silent screen, like the slideshow without music playing, there's a lot of noise that is obvious when you wear headphones. You should be able to see this in OBS audio meter. All right, you ready? Ready for what? You still haven't told me. So what I'm seeing, because the white noise, by the way, is not coming from the microphone. I'm seeing that there is some kind of a noise coming out of the capture device. I'm going to be completely silent. I'm going to open the chat because I want to see what you guys have to say about this. All right. So I am going to be completely silent right now. And I'm going to be silent for like 20 seconds. And I want you guys to tell me what you hear. Okay, ready? We're going to start in three, two, one. I'm going to be honest, I don't actually hear shit. That doesn't mean that something isn't there because I'm notorious for not being able to hear anything. But regardless of whether or not there is a noise or not, this is not the proper way to do this and doesn't make for entertaining content. Okay. Did you guys hear anything? Nada. I heard nothing. I don't hear anything. I hear nothing. There is a bit of white noise. A very slight white noise. Subtle, but it's there. Okay. So I guess my question would be, if there is a very small white noise, how can we stop it? Um, I could put an audio filter on the capture device, just like I put audio filters on this microphone, but I'm not exactly sure that would, f I don't know if it would fix it. I don't know how, here's the problem. If I put audio filters on the game audio, there's potential that now some of game audio will be dropped. And obviously that's the opposite of what we want. You don't want to have game audio dropped. Is there a solution around that little white noise? Dentronic says hardly noticeable if at all. Some people just say they can't hear it at all. If it's if it's audible, I don't hear it. I have Dolby Atmos headphones too, says Cheetah Man. You know, maybe maybe it was the mic. Because remember, these are suggestions for like a month ago. Maybe it was the mic. And maybe now putting the filters on the mic has fixed the problem. So most people are saying, don't bother. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. That was from a Jessica. Thank you for suggesting that. I mean, again, I don't know until we test stuff. And uh, I don't know what else we could do to fix that. Wow, an actual normal response for somebody who is genuinely trying to help DSP. It's not too often that that happens. Usually he lashes out for even the smallest of recommendations. So I guess big ups Jessica. But I love now that we've done this little test here live on stream, there's no further testing that we could do. There's no way we could figure it out, dude. It's just gonna be what it is. We gotta throw our hands up. Heaven forbid we actually listen back to our own content and make a determination for ourselves on whether or not we hear a noise. That would be ridiculous. Uh... My issue with your podcast is recapping the previous day and talking about the schedule. Already explained, so I was blue in the face why that's necessary. It's not changing. Great, awesome, perfect, fantastic. Moving on, I guess. The recap of the recap and the schedule are here to stay, even if you're not, Bozo. Um, okay. 
Let's see. Okay. I want to address the back and forth pull from viewers over whether you should do more gaming content versus more interactive non-gaming content. It seems there's no consensus can be reached. Everyone has their own preference. While it's true, most wanting more gameplay might outnumber those asking for other types of content. I would like to point out the value in catering to the dedicated group of fans that follow your more personalized and interactive content. It's my interpretation that due to your long 15-year legacy of mostly being a gamer, you have a larger contingent of people who want to see gaming. However, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> due to the diverse amount of games out there, there isn't really one type of game that will satisfy all gamers across the board. Um, when discussing non-gaming topics such as reactions, gaming news, Q&A, story time narrative, etc., these may have less demand from your full-time audience, but typically the ones who show up tend to stay engaged and focused during those kind of events. These interactions offer something unique which cannot be replicated through typical gaming videos. I was really trying to let him finish the entire suggestion before I butt in. But I have to ask right now, what sort of unique experience is this person receiving from a DSP react stream? From a DSP long form Q&A segment? What is meaningful there? What is unique about that content that you just love it so much you want more of it? And it's so unique that you couldn't replicate it while he played a video game. He makes the same stupid jokes, he's not funny, he's not interesting, he fence sits every single opinion that he's ever had, and he retcons history all the same. The only real difference with his chill segments is that sometimes Cat is there and they can both be boring as shit on screen together. Very meaningful, you're right, I figured it out. The reason why I think there is more demand for gaming content when you request feedback is because there are many voices that share a desire for more gaming, but they don't all participate equally when it comes to the gaming streams. This skews the data towards gaming demand. Due to the diverse amount of games out there and your audience's preference for various games, there is no one game that you can play that will unify all the more gaming crowd and bring them all in at once. Let's work with easy numbers and say you have 100 people, say 60% of your audience wants more games. Of those 60 people that want the games, 30 of them actually want a fighting game, 20 of them want a shooter, 10 of them want an RPG. As you can see here, already there's division within the gaming side alone. On the flip side, let's look at non-gaming content where only 40 people wanted that non-gaming content. And of those 40 people that showed interest, Almost all of them are willing to engage and interact with whatever you're producing. It's probably a very good point. And that, my friends, is the only reason that I think DSP even gave this suggestion the light of day. It's simply because this is something that he wanted to hear. He wanted somebody to say this to confirm his theory that people want more of him just sitting on his ass and not playing games. Because this suggestion actually has two things that DSP can't stand about a suggestion. It's way too long, like excruciatingly long. And it's got numbers. Dude, DSP hates numbers. Unless, of course, those numbers correlate directly to his PayPal or how many stars his Hogan is gonna have. But for the most part, hates numbers. But this suggestion is saying exactly what he wants to hear so he's gonna read the entire thing and entertain it all the way through i just can't wait for him to cite this in the future in the suggestion box you guys remember you were telling me in the pre-stream actually that um i should be doing more of this style of content and playing less games you said that you oh it'll be fantastic in summary while both sides have valid arguments it's apparent that a unifying element exists among those who favor non-gaming content by nurturing engagement in this area you can potentially foster stronger connections with your community overall my humble recommendation would be to continue what you've been working toward with the variety of content you currently provide, but perhaps leaning in the non-gaming area slightly more, ensuring consistency and quality and building up your audience for non-gaming interactive content. This strategy allows room for growth of loyal followers that enjoy the interactive content that you want to eventually make more of anyway. Thus, it behooves you in the community that builds up your content towards what you want it to be and not just what the current target loudest group happens to ask for. Thanks for taking the time to read this. All right. What do you guys think? I'm just curious. I'm going to click over to the chat. <clears throat> what do you guys think about that? Notice that we didn't click over to the chat for the other suggestions that we've been receiving. And some of the people in chat really had a lot to say when it came to shortening the pre-stream by taking out the recap of the recap or the schedule segments. But we didn't want to hear about all of that. We want more confirmation on top of this confirmation style suggestion. You guys think that working towards and nurturing more non-gaming content makes sense. I think I understand the point. What they're in a nutshell. Oh, God damn it! what do you mean in a nutshell? We already had an in summary by the very person who wrote the suggestion. We don't need a in a nutshell segment too. Yes, a lot of people want me to play games. The problem is there's never a consensus on what game. So when I play a game, I'm isolating the audience that didn't want that game. It's different if there's like, for example, if GTA 6 was coming out tomorrow, 98% of my audience would want me to play GTA 6, right? When the Elden Ring DLC comes out, a ridiculous amount of my audience is going to want to see me play the Elden Ring DLC. 
those are the big ones we can all agree on yo he's preemptively hyping these games up again and i really don't think that it's a good idea given what his numbers have looked like recently obviously gta 6 is going to do good numbers for him when it comes out the problem is what do good numbers look like in that time period for dsp because they're getting worse and worse i just don't think that it's a good idea for him to be hyping up these games the way that he does knowing that so many of them recently have been flopping for him but like i always say what do i know i haven't been doing this full time for the past 13 years straight or whatever but when we're not actually focusing in on those big games basically the attention is is so pulled in different directions that i can't please everyone even though the majority of people say gaming when i play a game it doesn't satisfy the majority of people because everyone wants a different game as opposed to when people say you know i'm not so much into the gaming anymore but i like just hanging out with you so no matter what kind of chill game uh, content i make whether it's podcasting whether it's a chill night stream whether it's us reacting to my old gameplay like Heavy Rain. Those more personalized interactive streams are more appealing and they appeal to a wider group of people because they're not, oh, I only wanna see you interact with us in this one way. Most people are just happy to just interact, right? So I got you. I, I totally get what this person's saying. And like I said, I feel that the future is to diversify and split more down the, the middle. Like right now, I'm like 80% gaming, 20% other content. Because if you think about it, podcasting, the React show, and the throwback channel are all different from just the pure gaming. But for the most part, right, at least almost five hours a day, I'm playing games. So it's probably an 80-20 split right now. I think the goal would eventually to be try to go 50-50. Sure, for five hours a day, you are playing video games Monday through Saturday. I'll give you that. But how did you come up with an 80-20 split when you spend two hours every single day doing the pre-stream? That's already about a quarter of your content every single day. And that's before we even factor in that you take an entire day where you play no video games and do everything else on Sunday. So 80-20 split just doesn't make any sense, man. That's not how the math works out. And that's, again, even before we take into consideration all of the stupid shit that you do while you play video games, things like getting up to stretch your back, things like closing the goddamn blinds or going to the bathroom. I honestly think that we're already at a 50-50 split when you take all of those things into consideration. And he is finding more and more reasons to just get up and walk off camera in the middle of a stream. A couple of days ago, he got up just so that he could clip off a hangnail. And I think it was just yesterday, he got up two or three times just to move the blinds around because the wind was blowing too hard. He just doesn't want to play video games. I wish he would admit it. Try to go 50-50. Still play a good amount of games play the biggest high profile games everyone really wants me to play but then take my time and split it into other stuff and it's going to mean playing way less games over time but i think that's the way to go honestly you know i'm being honest here i don't think that me being a full-time gamer for the rest of my life is going to work i'm about to be 42 years old how many people want to see a 40 50 60 year old fucking playing video games right your age really should have nothing to do with whether or not people want to see you play video games. It's about how entertaining you are, DSP. And that entertainment can really come from a myriad of factors, whether it be because you're actually good at the games or just because you are funny, have a good personality and interesting things to talk about. Unfortunately for you, you have none of those things. But age really plays no part in whether or not people want to watch your content. At least it shouldn't. I'm just saying. I mean, I think that's the case. So we'll, but again, this is something to explore as we move down the line. I think what we're doing now is, is kind of working, you know? Okay. Instead of recapping the previous day on the podcast, do a recap segment on the uh, on the podcast each week and recap things in detail there. That will never work because too much happens in a given week. Just think about this. In one given week, <clears throat> there could be new games. There could be continuing games. There could be things that have to change in the schedule because a game doesn't work, Right? There could be things on the fly that happen that we have to adjust. By the way, by talking about this stuff every day, it gives me the feedback I need to figure out what to do in the future. So here's a perfect example. We just started a discussion about my birthday marathon. Within a couple days of me bringing this up, all right, now we know, oh, let's do a tier maker. But what should the tier maker be? Well, maybe it'll be Mario. Maybe it'll be something else. We'll continue to talk about this daily. And within a week, we'll figure it out. If I literally waited until Sunday to bring it up, and I only bring these things up once a week, that's not enough time. 
Well, deciding what tier maker you're going to do for your stupid birthday week is really as simple as just creating a community post that people can vote on or add their own options to. It's not all that complicated. It doesn't need to be live feedback done on the stream while you're sitting there. And if you're unwilling to stop doing the recap segment every single day because your schedule is just so hectic, I only have to ask then, what is even the point of having a schedule that we go over every single day if it's so hectic and we constantly have to recap and talk about everything? It doesn't really seem that the schedule is doing anybody any justice then. It doesn't seem like it's worth every Everybody's time sitting here day in and day out listening to you talk for 20 to 30 minutes at a time about something that you talked about yesterday. And if we're being honest, really doesn't change all that much, you goddamn goober. You see, I understand if you get bored of something being mentioned every day, I get it. But at the same time, you have to understand that it serves a purpose, right? The thing is, people just want instant gratification and don't want to have any kind of reasoning or rationale as to why something shouldn't be changed. For example, People say that I approach the suggestion box as a debunked box. No, it's not. I've actually adopted a lot of things from the suggestion box so far as direct things in my content, putting filters on the mic, having the pause button be implemented <clears throat> in my content. Some of the ideas we've come up for events and things based off of the suggestion box, correct? But notice all of the things from the suggestion box that he actually accepted were either A, from known dents, or B, the simplest goddamn improvement that he could have made to his stream that should have happened a decade ago. I only just started streaming in 2023, at the end of it actually, and almost instantly realized there was a pause recording feature in OBS built in right there in front of you. And within a month of streaming, I had filters on my audio already. I'm not saying that my audio is the best during a stream, but I've definitely fiddled around with it and think that it sounds okay. DSP's been doing this for 13 years, man. Man. So let's not sit here and toot our horn that we finally did something that we were supposed to do within the last decade. And only because Major Dents asked us to do it in a very specified suggestion box. This is not something to be proud over. And it's definitely not a defense to all of the other suggestions that you constantly shoot down that would also improve your content. Like shortening the goddamn pre-stream that's a waste of time. The thing is, I can't implement all of it. So the moment that I say, oh, this doesn't work or whatever. Oh, you see, Phil's debunking and Phil's he's just yelling it. No, no, no. You just, you, again, why is everything in life black and white, right? That, so you suggest completely get rid of the recaps, do them once a week. And I say, that ain't going to work. Only recapping once a week isn't enough because it doesn't give you enough of a perspective on things going on each day to get the feedback I need to make the correct decisions. Oh, you see, Phil debunked it. Well, no, I didn't debunk it. I just said, this is why I'm not going to do it. And I respectfully decline that suggestion, but you don't have to put drama into it because you're act like a five-year-old, Okay. But that just proves, DSP, that you don't understand what the definition of debunk even is. Because the very act of explaining why you won't do something is in fact debunking it. And I'm sure you're aware of this, but most of the suggestions that you get in the suggestion box, you are outright saying you're not going to do, and here's why. That's why people refer to it as the debunk box. And I couldn't have said this better myself, so I guess shout out JJ. Debunk box, debunked. All right, we'll do one more, and then we're gonna get to shout outs. The suggestion that I gave in May of 2013 is more relevant than ever, okay? You remember back when your capture card gave out late in late 22 and early 2023 and you had those hangout streams until the new one arrived? They were enjoyable, chill, and surprisingly successful. You even mentioned wanting to do more hangout streams in the future. This would be just like that. Yes, if you remember, my capture card broke, so we basically did streams where I went into the hard drives in my closet to see what videos were on the hard drives, and that's eventually what led to DSP throwback because we found all the raw gameplay footage from back in the day. Um, and we had a couple other streams where we just hung out and shot the shit because I couldn't do anything else. I didn't even know that that's why we got those streams where he discovered the hard drives and all of that. It was actually because his capture card was broken and he was waiting for a new one. You know, as stupid as it is, I have to give him credit. Because even when he couldn't actually provide people gameplay, you know, the thing that they come to DSP Space Gaming for, he still managed to swindle money out of them. A true talent. Picture this, late night streams with a relaxed, casual vibe. During the stream, members suggest topics, news stories, short video clips, and a members-only thread while the show's live. You keep an eye on this thread throughout the night. If something catches your interest, like a gaming news story, a funny article, or a viral video clip, you record a quick 5-10 to 10 minute video sharing your thoughts, uh, incorporating live chat into the conversation. Excuse me. Whew. This way, you'd have a series of concise, single-topic videos to upload to DSP Reacts, catering to viewers who prefer shorter, more digestible clips. Over the course of a two-hour late-night stream, you might end up with five or more of these videos, which you can then upload throughout the week or even weeks. I've seen other streamers do something similar, booting up a stream and hanging out with their viewers with no fixed plan. Someone brings a topic in chat, the streamer shares their opinion or watches a relevant clip, which later ends up on their clip's channel. This could be your version of that. 
One common complaint nowadays with members is how competitive submissions are for DSP versus the internet. The new show would level the playing field. It's entirely up to you and your interest in their topic story clip, whether or not you cover it. And if I'm being fair here, I don't entirely hate this idea. It's not something that I'm personally interested in because I don't like this format for content and I definitely don't like DSP. Come on now. But as far as an idea goes, this is an idea. It's well thought out and it's something that DSP really could do if he wanted to freshen up his content. Plus for members who only catch night streams, it gives them something to look forward to on DSP React. Personally, I can count on one hand how many DSP versus the internet streams I've managed to attend live. The show doesn't need a formal name. You can simply call it a hangout stream. Hey guys, tonight I'm doing a hangout stream on DSP Reacts. Instantly people would know it's a laid back informal affair. Um, well, I like the idea, but we would definitely have to refine it from this original idea. So allow me to explain. I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, this is the kind of shit that Moist Critical does. This is the kind of shit that Asmongold does. All right, it works for them but there's a reason it works for them. Please, for the love of God, don't say it's because they have a huge audience and they're massive content creators. Just for once, have a different excuse, please. It's not because they have a members only thread that people post into. It's because they have a team of editors and screeners, okay? They actually have people who take in all of these suggestions, scrub the suggestions, formulate them into a post or thread of what they feel are the best suggestions, the kind of stuff that that content creator likes and then that content creator goes through it live on the stream. Okay, that's why it works. <clears throat> okay, not exactly what I was expecting, but I have to ask then DSP, how do you know that that's how it works? How do you know that they don't just have a members only tab that people are putting their suggestions into? How do you know that it involves any sort of editors or a team of people behind the scenes that are screening a bunch of shit? Because without any evidence, this is the first time I'm hearing about this and I'm just inclined to not believe you because that sounds like some made up conspiracy bullshit. In regards to me, okay, I don't have that, all right? Now, I, don't, I know what, what you're saying. You're saying do a members-only thread. The whole idea of members-only doesn't work. Why? Because people have found a way to abuse memberships on YouTube. They can literally spend less than a penny and get a membership. So membership-only doesn't work. It's the same as just having open thread. It really is at this point, okay? I just want to make that clear. There's nothing that can really be done about that. Anyone can pay a penny to get a fucking membership now and just spam a thread with a bunch of, of just duty. Okay? Big ups duty, I guess. And definitely big ups all of the Argentinian fighters out on the war front. You guys are still sticking it to them and fighting the good fight. Again, I cannot condone any Argentinian style ops, but I can't always appreciate the things that come from them. I like the idea. But primarily the people who do this are people who have Discord presence, right? Sign up for my Discord, go into the submissions area, post up clips you think that the content creator should watch this week. Our editors will scrub that and put that into a thread that the person can now watch on a hangout night. I have none of that. Okay? I wish it did. I wish that that's the way that my community went. I tried that in the past. You know, I had my own forums. I had things like that going on. It did work out. Over the years when I became a running meme of toxicity and negativity, meaning everyone just wanted to crap on me, basically so many people now hate me that whenever I would attempt to do something like this, it just, it gets ruined, right? Like barely can I even maintain the DSP Reacts channel because DSP versus the internet almost failed because of this membership debacle. Luckily, I figured out how to fix it and it's been fine since, you know, it's a little bit more work for me now to scrub stuff but for the most part, it's still working, okay? So I'll admit, I was absolutely wrong. It's not because they're bigger and better streamers than him. It's because of those goddamn dirty detractors and trolls, dude. What a classic excuse as to why he can't do something. Because of course, DSP has the largest detractor community out of all of the lol cows. As long as you ignore all of those other lol cows who actually have far larger communities and communities that go out of their way to actually find them in real life. But nah, DSP has it way worse than everybody else, dude. Shut up. But uh... I, I like the idea. I do. I think that this leads to a whole idea of a new late night chill stream. We're all hanging out. We're just having a good time. You guys suggest stuff. I, I go through a thread of stuff like that and you say, okay, here's these suggestions and we, well, you know, skim through them or whatever uh, and see if it's something that's interesting for me to watch fully or whatever. You know, I like the idea, but it only works as a team effort. That Those shows that you watch people do, those could never work with one person. 
<laughs> you know, they're only possible because these are huge content creators who have teams of people working for them. I, I don't have that. But that suggestion explained to you exactly how you could do it if you didn't have your Argentinian style problem. So it doesn't actually require a large team like you're insisting it does. It just requires you to not be a hated dickhead on the internet. So yeah, still impossible for you, but not for the reasons that you're indicating. You know, <clears throat> I'm, listen to me. I'm lucky enough to have the moderators that I have show up when they do. They're volunteers, you understand? I don't pay them because I can't afford to pay them. The editors that I have, are overworked making the content for the DSP throwback channel as well as thumbnails for all my videos. They don't have extra time on top of that. Like this other suggestion was also made a week or two ago. Why don't you have people cut news stories out of your streams and make them separate videos? Cause that's like a full-time job. You know, again, all this, these suggestions are absolutely fabulous. If I were a big YouTuber who had a lot of money to hire employees to do this for me, I would love to do it. Like, I like this idea. I would be thrilled to do this show. But with the resources I have, I can't do it, you know? It would have to be, we would have to refine the idea. How could this be done without, it can't be a members only thread because membership means nothing now. Anyone can get a membership and just fucking throw in shit. So that's not going to work. Um, but, what, you know, how could it be possible? Let's think about it. Let's continue to discuss this idea. I like this idea. I'm sure now people will hear this idea and think, hmm, okay, maybe here's a spin on it that we could do or something that we could do to make it work for Phil. Because again, I would love to do the show. That sounds like a great idea. No way I could do it on my own right now. And I can't hire people to do it for me like the big YouTubers that I know you have in mind do, okay? I mean, just remember last year when Asmund Gold, okay, reacted to me. He literally says, why'd you guys submit this for me to watch? Everyone wants me to watch this clip, huh? And he watches it. He's like, I don't understand why you haven't watched it. Because everyone submitted it. People scrubbed it. Said, a lot of people submitted this, you know, Asmin, will you watch this? And then he watched it. As opposed to, how would I do that myself? I, you know? I mean, you could open up this suggestion thread on literally any website, DSP. It doesn't have to be a membership style tab on YouTube. But go ahead, keep making excuses. Also, fun fact, DSP is not the only person that Asmund Gold has reacted to. I actually made an appearance in an Asmund Gold clip myself. He didn't have nice things to say about me, but, you know, I was there. Okay, so the thing is, I like that suggestion. That's a good one, but it's not one that I can do in its current form. We have to kind of refine that suggestion better. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> All right, that's enough for Suggestion Box for today. Thank you guys for your suggestions. I was actually thinking about that same thing, DSP. That's enough Suggestion Box for the day. But instead of appreciating the suggestions, I want to appreciate some of the comments from my last video because you guys are awesome and I love my members. Big ups. Akai Crimson says, leave it to DSP to get the absolute worst possible conclusion to Astarian's quest. He literally lost in every way imaginable in that arc. And while I can't confirm this myself because again, I haven't beaten the game, haven't made it that far in the game, this is what a lot of people have been telling me. Shout out a lot of people, obviously. That DSP managed to piss off Astarian at every junction possible and then be confused as to why he got the worst possible ending. Baron Von Kame says, Phil's really failing to understand that since he kept his relationship with Astarian business, Astarian felt at will to quit the relationship. As is his right, if you ask me. Especially after the way that DSP was treating him. He was nothing more than a tool to DSP, and that was made very clear throughout the gameplay. I'm not sure if Astarian really could have left any sooner, but if he could have, I don't know why he didn't. And Soulmare333 says, You know, I thought this screenshot about this situation showed his narcissism enough. But seeing him say it out loud and not hear himself was disturbing especially about the killing and taking of his gear back after the breakup comparison. He may, in fact, be that guy. Well, if DSP has told us anything throughout the years, it's that he is, in fact, him. He's the one. He's the guy. So hopefully that quells any worries that you might have about DSP. Or not. But either way, I want to give a big shout out to everybody who watched the video, especially if you made it this far. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. But until then, make sure you check out other detractor channels, dive deeper into that. Snortex.